Good afternoon, everyone. I am Satadal Dutta from the Delft University of Technology, the Netherlands. In today's talk, I will present the very first proof of principle optical absorption sensing with dual spectrum silicon light emitting diodes in silicon on insulator CMOS technology. The motivation behind our work is to develop miniaturized and low cost optical absorption sensors uh, to detect biochemicals that are crucial for agricultural or food sector and healthcare. If we look at the state of the art optical absorption sensors, for example, spectrophotometers, they comprise power hungry light emitting uh, devices, uh, often lasers that are designed in 3.5 semiconductor technology. These are largely incompatible with CMOS technology. They require relatively expensive optical components such as filters to tune the light emission wavelength from such a source. Often they require large volumes of the analyte specimen in such a sensor, typically in milliliters. Such features make the sensor relatively bulky. Now we propose to integrate this entire system in CMOS technology such that it is compact and a relatively small volume of the analyte specimen, typically in microliters, will be enough to carry out the sensing operation. The research question that comes up here is that if such a system is feasible with silicon as the light source, despite the fact that a silicon diode emits light with a very low optical power efficiency? And the answer is yes, we can. So what is special about silicon diode? Well, silicon is an indirect band gap semiconductor as shown here. If you operate a silicon PN diode in forward bias, it emits low intensity near infrared light uh, centered at around 1.1 micrometer optical wavelength. However, if you operate the same diode in reverse bias or in, uh, or in other words, avalanche breakdown, the high electric field in the PN junction of the diode uh, results in the emission of broad spectrum light that speaks in the visible part of the spectrum as shown by the blue curve here. So we see that the same device emits non-overlapping electroluminescent spectra when the, the polarity of the applied voltage bias is uh, switched. We take help of this beautiful phenomenon to demonstrate our optical sensor. So we take our silicon uh, LED, which, is, which sits in a CMOS chip, and we operate it in both forward and avalanche modes of operation. Now, uh, we place a microscopic uh, glycerol droplet um, on top to cover our silicon LED. Now, glycerol is chosen as, as our solvent because it is uh, non-volatile and is, is physically stable and doesn't react with uh, the surface easily. Um, the glycerol droplet contains uh, the, our pigment of interest, in this case, carmine, a very popular red food dye. N uh, the light emitted by the silicon LED travels uh, vertically upwards. It travels through the droplet, undergoes absorption by the pigment, and finally it is collected vertically with the help of a silicon photodiode mounted on top. Note that during this measurement, neither the LED nor the droplet needs to be replaced. The photocurrent through, uh, in our detector can be, uh, can be expressed in terms uh, with the help of applied Beer-Lambert's law. The photocurrent will be dependent upon the quantum efficiencies of the LED, the photodiode, the optical transmission efficiency of the glycerol droplet, the current through the LED, and also the concentration of pigment in our, drop, in our droplet and the height, physical height of the droplet. Now, the parameter of interest here is to extract the absorption coefficient alpha. Uh, in the context of broad spectrum light emission, as, uh, as uh, in, in our case with the silicon LEDs, uh, we, we observe that the um, molar absorption coefficient, uh, which is reported in literature for our pigment, has a finite overlap with uh, only the avalanche mode emission spectrum of the LED as shown by the red shaded region. And the overlap of the absorption spectrum of the pigment is practically zero in the near infrared, uh, which, is, uh, which is emitted in forward biased LED operation. So the red shaded region uh, can be mathematically expressed uh, by this overlap integral. And it, and it represents um, the, the, our LED specific uh, molar absorption coefficient of the pigment. Now this, in this integral, the alpha M is, uh, is the monochromatic uh, molar absorption coefficient, uh, which is reported in literature. And epsilon is the power normalized electroluminescent intensity of our LED. Now using this number, we can uh, use it later on to compute the concentration of our pigment in a given sample because the absorption coefficient is linearly dependent upon the concentration. Now, our experimental method is as follows. Uh, we take a reference undiluted uh, commercially available carmine solution and we dilute it into five different uh, test tubes as shown here uh, with, with a known uh, relative uh, 
per, uh, concentration by by percentage by by percentage of volume as shown here um, from each of these sample we transfer a small droplet uh, on top to cover our silicon led that uh, sits on a cmos chip we transfer the droplet with the help of a, a hydrophilic silica fiber uh, the led on the cmos chip is driven in constant current uh, mode and uh, the light is uh, captured vertically with the help of uh, a photoprojector operating in reverse uh, under a small reverse bias from the measured photocurrents, we then compute the color ratio of optical coupling via the droplet. The color ratio is nothing but the ratio of photocurrents uh, measured when the LED is oper operated in avalanche mode to the case when the LED, same LED is operated in forward mode operation. So this taking this ratio helps us in extracting the optical transmission coefficient as shown by the equation here directly. Once the measurement is done, we can clean the surface of our chip. We remove the droplet by cleaning it with uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, our sensor is ready to be recycled to measure with the, with, the next droplet, with the next droplet specimen. So in our work, we use uh, two uh, example LED designs uh, that were designed, both of them were designed in a, a standard uh, silicon on insulator CMOS technology. Uh, the cross section of the devices are shown here, uh, also the top view. Um, these devices uh, are both uh, PN junctions. Uh, they differ only uh, in their avalanche breakdown voltages and also uh, they differ in their external quantum efficiency of light emission from the chip. Shown here is, are the measured electroluminescence spectra in uh, both avalanche and forward mode operation of the LED. Also shown alongside is uh, the pigment absorption coefficient, the molar absorption coefficient uh, shown by the red curve, which is reported in literature. Now coming to our results, shown here is the measured photocurrents as a function of the LED current uh, operated in both avalanche and forward modes. Uh, as we see, we see here that irrespective of the LED design, LED design, the uh, optical coupling to the photodetector is higher in uh, avalanche mode LED operation as compared to forward mode LED operation. And this is because of the fact that the silicon diode is, uh, has a significantly higher responsivity uh, to visible light as compared to near infrared light. From the photocurrents, we can also compute uh, the color ratio of the optical coupling as discussed in the previous slide. We see here that when uh, the glycerol droplet is present on top of our CMOS chip, the optical coupling to the photodetector is uh, higher uh, as compared to when the droplet is not present in that is in air. And this is because the glycerol droplet acts as a micro lens on top of our CMOS chip. Now from the above data, we can compute the transmission coefficient through our droplet uh, by normalizing the color ratio uh, extracted from the previous graphs uh, by normalizing it uh, we, uh, with respect to uh, the case when there is no pigment present in our glycerol droplet. So uh, with respect to a concentration value of zero. So this gives us the transmission coefficient variation with respect uh, as a function of uh, the concentration of our uh, pigment. Uh, relative concentration of our pigment. Uh, so we fit the data with, an, uh, with our beer lambert's law expression, uh, which shows that it decreases, exp the transmission coefficient decreases exponentially uh, as the concentration increases. Now to measure, to, to extract the absorption coefficient of a given droplet, uh, we need to measure the height of the droplet. Now we did that by imaging techniques using both optical tensiometer and also standard optical microscopy as shown here. Uh, we obtained the height of the center height of the droplet to be uh, centered around 230 micrometers and with a droplet to droplet variation of around 50 micrometers. So the droplet was transferred with the help of a silica fiber and note that the height of the droplet uh, depends mainly on the surface tension of glycerol and also the angle of contact between the glycerol droplet and the oxide layer that uh, covers our CMOS chip. Now, uh, to summarize our performance of our sensor, well, with the help of the equations that were discussed uh, in the previous slides, uh, we extracted the, the absorption coefficient of our reference uh, undiluted uh, carmine solution uh, in the range between uh, 20 and 60 uh, centimeter inverse uh, as the, the distribution of, the, um, uh, of our extraction uh, procedure has, has been shown here. The uncertainty in, in our extraction uh, procedure lies on the fact that uh, there is uncertainty in the height of the droplet and also uncertainty in our numerical fit routine. From the absorption coefficient, we can now calculate the 
uh, refer back calculate the concentration of our of karma in our reference solution uh, and this can be done with, with the help of the calculated uh, led specific molar absorption coefficient uh, that was done uh, that was demonstrated earlier now we achieved a maximum sensitivity with the help of this sensor to be around uh, 1264 centimeter inverse molar inverse uh, the static uh, electrical power consumption is in the range of between 50 and 100 milliwatts. The device footprint uh, is dominated by the area of the photodiode at the moment because it is not currently integrated in the same CMOS chip. However, we have, achieve, we have achieved optical sensing demonstration with the help of a very small volume of the specimen, less than one microliter. The advantages of this sensor is, uh, are uh, quite a few. Uh, the a few of them are listed here. So note that there is no requirement of a warm up time for, for the light source, which means uh, it, it, it will lead to rapid testing. The low intensity of light means that it will be safe uh, for light sensitive pigments. Also, the, the color ratio technique uh, suppresses uh, the, the, the drift in our sensor because of uh, temperature fluctuations. To summarize our talk, we have demonstrated a proof of principle optical absorption sensing with the help of silicon LEDs uh, in standard CMOS technology. The advantages of our system are mainly that, the, that we, do, we do not need to replace the device not, or, or the sample uh, to, uh, to switch the wavelength of light being emitted by the source. The color ratio technique increases the immunity to temperature variations. Uh, we require a micro volume specimen uh, with the help of a non-volatile solvent to uh, demonstrate, uh, to carry out the sensing measurement. Our, our sensor is thus uh, highly suitable for uh, biochemical pigments that are crucial for plant and animal health, for example, chlorophyll, carotenoids, uh, contaminants in water, or even hemoglobin in blood. Uh, in future, we, are, we look forward to address a few challenges to, uh, to continue this work forward. We look forward to integrate the entire uh, system, including the LED and the photodiode uh, in, in the CMOS chip, where, where the analyte specimen can be placed in a microscopic trench. Uh, we can further improve the reliability of our sensor by, by reducing the LED avalanche breakdown voltage and by ensuring that the gal there is complete galvanic, galvanic isolation of the, glycerol, of the glycerol droplet from the LED and the photodiode. Uh, we can further uh, increase the sensitivity of our sensor and the selectivity of our sensor to a particular pigment by careful design techniques uh, where we can tune the peak and the width of the electroluminescent spectrum of our LED. That brings me to the end of my talk. I would like to thank my co-authors and uh, our funding agencies for the project and the technicians who helped us help me in my measurements. And I thank you for your attention and I'm open for questions now.